the 2023 West Virginia DMV written test. This test has 60 questions with explained answers to help you prepare for this test. Before we get started, don't forget to jumpstart that like button to keep this channel running. Now here is your DMV instructor to walk you through the questions. Question one, how much faster than the posted speed limit is it legal to travel? A, one mile per hour. B, five miles per hour. C. The posted speed limit is just a suggestion. You can travel whatever speed you are comfortable driving. D. You should never travel more than the posted speed limit. The correct answer is... D. You should never travel more than the posted speed limit. Traveling faster than the posted speed limit poses a safety risk for you and others. You will have reduced time to react to safety hazards, and the risk of collision-related serious injury or death increases at faster speeds. Question 2. What does the term blind spots refer to when operating a vehicle? A. Areas that you can't see from your vehicle. B. Places non-seeing people cross the road. C. Areas that other drivers can't see from their vehicles. D. Both A and C are correct. The correct answer is D. Both A and C are correct. There are areas that you, as the driver, will not be able to see around your vehicle that a pedestrian or another vehicle might be in. Likewise, there are areas around other vehicles that the driver will not be able to see your vehicle if your vehicle should enter them. It is important that you are aware of these areas to avoid potential collisions. Question 3. How close to an intersection is it safe to pass another vehicle? A. 20 feet. B. 75 feet. C. 100 feet. D. 50 feet. The correct answer is C. 100 feet. You should not pass another vehicle within 100 feet of an intersection, railroad crossing, tunnel, crosswalk, or underpass. There is not enough time for you or others to stop or react to prevent a collision. Question 4. The line between two points extends from your eyes in order to focus A. Field of view B. Line of sight C. Fringe vision D. Following distance The correct answer is B. Line of sight Line of sight is the visible path of travel from your vehicle to the target area. Your line of sight can also be blocked by other objects, such as large trucks, parked cars, curves, or hills in the road, etc. Question 5. When there are multiple lanes to drive in, which lane should you drive in? A. The fastest traveling lane. B. The rightmost lane. C. The leftmost lane. D. The middle lane. The correct answer is... B. The rightmost lane. Traveling in the right lane keeps the other lanes open for passing and emergency vehicles. Question 6. How far from the curb should you park when parallel parking? A. At least 6 inches. B. No more than 12 inches. C. At least 12 inches. D. No more than 6 inches. The correct answer is... B. No more than 12 inches. Parking more than 12 inches from the curb would leave your vehicle in the way of traffic and present a safety hazard for other drivers. Question 7. When you are parking on a hill with the front of the vehicle facing uphill and there is a curb, which way should the wheels be turned? A. Away from the curb. B. Towards the curb. C. Straight. D. It doesn't matter. The correct answer is... A. Away from the curb. Turning the wheels away from the curb will allow the least amount of vehicle movement should the parking brake fail and the vehicle begins to roll downhill. Question 8. When you are parking on a hill with the front of the vehicle facing downhill and there is a curb, which way should the wheels be turned? A. Away from the curb. B. Towards the curb. C. Straight. D. It doesn't matter. The correct answer is... B. Towards the curb. Turning the wheels towards the curb will allow the least amount of vehicle movement should the parking brake fail and the vehicle begins to roll downhill. Question 9. On a street that allows parking but also has a fire hydrant, how far must you park from the fire hydrant? A. At least 25 feet. B. At least 15 feet. 
C. At least 10 feet. D. At least 5 feet. The correct answer is C. At least 10 feet. Leaving at least 10 feet of space allows emergency responders adequate space to access the fire hydrant in case of an emergency. Question 10. When is it okay to park in front of mailboxes? A. On Sundays and holidays when mail won't be delivered. B. Never. C. After mail has been delivered for the day. D. If you are only leaving the vehicle for a few minutes. The correct answer is... B. Never. It is never okay to block a mailbox even if mail has already been delivered. Someone may still need access to the mailbox to check their mail. Question 11. If your vehicle breaks down on the highway and you must leave it overnight, what kind of visible lighting must you have on the vehicle? A. The vehicle's bright headlights will alert other drivers of the vehicle's presence. B. None. If the vehicle is broken down, the lights probably don't work. C. At least one yellow or amber light at the front and red light at the back visible from at least 500 feet. D. At least one yellow or amber light at the front and red light at the back visible from at least 1,000 feet. The correct answer is... C. At least one yellow or amber light at the front and red light at the back visible from at least 500 feet. Proper lighting on a broken-down vehicle on the side of the road in the dark will prevent distractions and collisions. Question 12. If the passengers in your vehicle don't want to wear their seatbelt, it is their responsibility. Is it considered your responsibility or the driver's? A. The passengers. B. The drivers. C. The drivers only if the passenger is a minor child. D. The drivers only if the passenger is in the front seat. The correct answer is B. The drivers. The driver is in control of the vehicle and doesn't have to move the vehicle until everyone is buckled up. The driver is ultimately responsible for the safety of everyone in the vehicle. Question 13. This type of vision is used to judge depth, your vehicle's lane position, and other objects close to your intended path of travel. A. Central vision. B. Path of travel. C. Fringe vision. D. Breaking distance. The correct answer is... C. Fringe vision. Fringe vision helps a driver by altering the central vision and judging a vehicle's speed and distance. Question 14. When traveling with children, which children need a car seat or booster seat? A. An infant under 20 pounds. B. A 5-year-old under 40 pounds. C. A seven-year-old under 60 pounds. D. All of the above. The correct answer is... D. All of the above. All of these children are under the weight limits and age limits to ride without a proper car seat or booster seat. Small children's bodies are not fully developed, and the risk of injury or death is far greater for them than it is for older children or adults in even a small collision. Question 15. When is it safe to leave children in the vehicle? A. If you leave the keys in it and leave it running so the air conditioning or heat stay on. B. If you'll be right back. C. If it is daytime. D. Never. The correct answer is... D. Never. Children should never be left in a vehicle without supervision. The vehicle could quickly become too hot or cold. Someone could break in and abduct or harm the children or the vehicle could be involved in a collision while you are away. Question 16. How old should someone be before they ride in the front seat? A. 10. B. 8. C. 15. D. 13. The correct answer is... D. 13. Because of the force of airbag deployment in a collision, younger passengers should ride in the back to avoid further injury in a collision. Airbags will keep older, adult-sized passengers safe, but can seriously injure smaller passengers. Question 17. If you are in an accident and someone is injured, what should you do? A. Call 911 and wait for them to help. B. Call 911, then administer first aid if you are certified or do what you can to help the injured person if you are not first aid certified. C. 
Help yourself and make sure everyone knows you didn't cause the accident. D. Leave so that no one knows you were there so you don't get in trouble. The correct answer is... B. Call 911, then administer first aid if you are certified, or do what you can to help the injured person if you are not first aid certified. You are legally obligated to call 911 to report the accident and provide help to an injured person in an accident. Leaving the scene or ignoring the injured person will put you at a legal risk, plus it is morally unsound. Question 18. When you come to a stop sign, what must you do? A. Come to a complete stop and check for safety before proceeding. B. Slow down enough to make sure it is safe to proceed through the intersection. C. Only stop or slow down if you see other traffic or pedestrians. D. Stop and wait for it to turn green before proceeding. The correct answer is... A. Come to a complete stop and check for safety before proceeding. Anytime you come across a stop sign, you must stop and check for safety before proceeding. You might have to wait for other traffic or pedestrians, or may even have to take turns if multiple vehicles approach the same intersection at the same time. Follow the right-of-way turns. Question 19. How far in front of or behind a school bus with flashing lights and extended stop sign should you stop? A. 10 feet. B. 15 feet. C. 25 feet. D. 20 feet. The correct answer is... D. 20 feet. Children may cross within 10 feet of the stop bus. To give them a safe amount of space, you should stop 20 feet from the front or back of the bus. Question 20. If you pass a school bus when it has flashing lights and a stop sign extended, how many hours later may you be arrested by a police officer? A. 1 hour. B. 8 hours. C. 4 hours. D. 12 hours. The correct answer is... C. 4 hours. Passing a school bus with flashing lights and an extended stop sign puts the lives and safety of many people and children at risk. Buses are equipped with cameras and bus drivers can and will report illegal passes. You can be arrested up to four hours after illegally passing a bus when the lights are flashing and the stop sign is extended. Question 21. When two vehicles reach an intersection with no traffic light at the same time, which vehicle has the right of way? A. The vehicle on the left. B. The vehicle on the right. C. The vehicle that goes faster. D. The drivers have to decide by means of waves and hand signals. The correct answer is B, the vehicle on the right. If there is no traffic light and both vehicles have reached the intersection at the same time, the vehicle on the right will have the right of way. Question 22. When a funeral procession is identified with headlights or hazard lights, do they have the right of way? A, yes. B, no. C, only on days appropriate for funerals. D. Only on Sundays. The correct answer is... Yes. Funeral processions will be identified with headlights and hazard lights. They usually follow a hearse and are sometimes escorted by emergency vehicles. The funeral procession has the right-of-way and you should yield to the entire procession. Question 23. You should signal at least blank before your turn. A. 100 feet. B. 1,000 feet, C, 500 feet, D, 200 feet. The correct answer is A, 100 feet. Signals should be used 100 feet prior to making a turn. This lets others know in advance what your intentions are. Question 24. If another vehicle is stopped to allow a pedestrian to cross the road, is it allowable to pass that vehicle? A. Yes, if the pedestrian is not in your lane of traffic. B. No. C. Only if you can do so without harming the pedestrian. D. If the pedestrian is not in a crosswalk, it is fine. The correct answer is... B. No. Pedestrians have the right-of-way. Violating the pedestrian right-of-way law is not only illegal, but dangerous. Question 25. How close should you follow a motorcycle? A. Closer than a regular vehicle. 
B. At least 20 feet. C. At least one vehicle length. D. At least as far as a regular vehicle or farther. The correct answer is... D. At least as far as a regular vehicle or farther. Because motorcycles can weave and topple, it is important to give them as much or more space than a regular vehicle in case of an accident. Following too closely is dangerous and illegal. Question 26. Is it safe to move into the empty space a large commercial vehicle like a bus, semi, or construction vehicle have right in front of them while traveling on the highway? A. Yes. B. No. C. Only if you're quick about it. D. If you're in a hurry, it is fine. The correct answer is B. No. Not only is the space directly in front of larger vehicles a blind spot, it takes larger vehicles longer to stop. If you have to stop suddenly, they might not see that or might not be able to stop in time and could rear-end your vehicle, causing serious damage to your vehicle and even serious injury or death to you and your passengers. Remember, your vehicle traveling at 55 miles per hour can stop with when 130 to 140 feet, while a fully loaded tractor trailer may require more than 400 feet. Question 27. How far should you stop from railroad tracks or gate? A. At least 15 feet. B. At least 6 feet. C. 12 feet. D. 6 feet. The correct answer is A. At least 15 feet. Stopping at least 15 feet from the railroad tracks or gate is the safest course of action. It leaves a buffer space for flying debris or from a rear-end collision that could push your vehicle forward towards the tracks and train. Question 28. Certain types of vehicles stop at all railroad tracks. For example, a school bus must stop at all railroad crossings. Is it legal to pass these vehicles at the railroad crossing? A. Yes. B. No. C. If they are stopped for more than a minute, yes. D. If they are stopped for more than 30 seconds, yes. The correct answer is... B. No. If you are within 100 feet of a railroad crossing, it is dangerous and illegal to pass any vehicle. Question 29. If you approach an intersection with a traffic light, but the traffic light is not operational, how should you treat the intersection? A. A free-for-all. Vehicles can just go and people should look out for themselves. B. Uncontrolled or like a stop sign. Vehicles should take turns. The one on the right has the right-of-way. C. Vehicles on the main road will have the right-of-way. Vehicles on the other road will have to wait. D. All of the above, depending where you are. The correct answer is... B. Uncontrolled or like a stop sign. Vehicles should take turns. The one on the right has the right-of-way. If the traffic lights are unoperational, the intersection should be treated as an uncontrolled intersection like a stop sign. Vehicles should take turns moving through the intersection, yielding right of way to the vehicle furthest to the right or first to arrive at the intersection. Question 30. Is it acceptable to enter the intersection if you would be unable to pass entirely through the intersection due to stopped or slow traffic blocking your path ahead? A. Yes, as long as you do so while the light is green. B. Yes, as long as you enter before the light turns red. C. Yes, if you think you can clear the intersection before the light turns red. D. No. The correct answer is... D. No. If your path is blocked by slow or stop traffic, you must wait for that traffic to move, even if your traffic light is green, if it means you will be blocking the intersection. You could end up stuck in the intersection when the light turns green for cross traffic or blocking the path of emergency vehicles. It is dangerous and illegal. Question 31. A steady red traffic light or steady red traffic arrow means what? A. Stop, wait for the light to turn green. B. Go when your path is clear. C. Stop, go when it is your turn. D. Go slow. The correct answer is... A. Stop, wait for the light to turn green. Always stop at a steady red traffic light or steady red arrow. Question 32. A flashing red traffic light or flashing red arrow mean what? A. Stop. Wait for the light to turn green. 
B. Go when your path is clear. C. You must come to a complete stop, and if there are no traffic signs prohibiting you from turning on a red light, you may proceed when it is safe. D. Go slow. The correct answer is... C. You must come to a complete stop, and if there are no traffic signs prohibiting you from turning on a red light, you may proceed when it is safe. Flashing red traffic lights should be treated like a stop sign. You should stop, yield to the other vehicles. You can then proceed when it is safe. Question 33. When lane use control signals are in use, a steady yellow X means what? A. You should speed up or slow down. B. You should move into another lane. C. You should prepare to stop. D. Any of the above. The correct answer is... B. You should move into another lane. A steady yellow X means you should prepare to move to another lane. A steady red X will be displayed next and you will not be able to occupy that lane at that time. Question 34. When lane use control signals are in use, a flashing yellow X means what? A. You should speed up or slow down. B. You should move into another lane. C. You should prepare to stop. D. You can use that lane to make a left turn. The correct answer is... D. You can use that lane to make a left turn. A flashing yellow X means you can use that lane to make a left turn. Question 35. What do white pavement markings on the road mean? A. Traffic traveling in the same direction. B. Dashed white lines mean the drivers can change lanes. C. Solid white lines mean lane changes are discouraged. D. All of the above. The correct answer is... D. All of the above. White pavement markings indicate the traffic is traveling in the same direction. If the lines are dashed, it is considered safe to change lanes in that area. If the lines are solid... It is not considered safe to change lanes in that area. Question 36. What makes up your following distance? A. Distance between your vehicle and other roadway users. B. The amount of space to the front of your vehicle. C. The amount of space to the back of your vehicle. D. Following distance is not something you need to worry about when driving. The correct answer is... A. Distance between your vehicle and other roadway users. Following distance is calculated by the distance between your vehicle and another moving vehicle or object. If you are driving in adverse weather, you should always increase your following distance in order to give yourself more time to avoid a conflict if needed. Question 37. What is black ice and why is it so dangerous? A. It does not exist. There is no such thing as black ice. B. Something your friends at school use to change the color of their drinking water. C. You drive a four-wheel drive car, so you do not need to be concerned about black ice. D. A thick coat of highly transparent ice, which means it blends into the road well and makes it harder to see. The correct answer is... D. A thick coat of highly transparent ice, which means it blends into the road well and makes it harder to see. Black ice is very hard to see. This is what makes it so dangerous. When driving in colder temperatures and the pavement is wet, there is always a chance for black ice to occur. Black ice frequently occurs when the sun warms snow and ice during the day, temperatures drop once the sun goes down, and the snow and ice that turned into water will now freeze, making it hard to see. An area of the roadway might look wet when indeed it is ice. Be prepared when driving during these types of situations. Question 38. What is the three-second rule? A. If you drop your snack on the floor of your vehicle, it is safe to eat if you retrieve it within three seconds. B. You can use your cell phone if it is only for three seconds. C. It helps you adjust your following distance when following another vehicle. D. It is how fast you should put on your seatbelt upon entering the vehicle. The correct answer is... C. It helps you adjust your following distance when following another vehicle. When following another vehicle, pick a fixed point of reference like a light pole and count off three seconds. If you don't finish counting three seconds before reaching the point of reference, you are following too closely and need to slow down to adjust your following distance. If road conditions are poor or your vehicle is larger, increase the rule to four or five seconds.
Question 39. Define visual lead. A. Area from the front of the vehicle that helps you gather information from the driving scene. B. A line that extends from the back of your vehicle. C. The area around your vehicle. D. All of the above. The correct answer is... A. Area from the front of the vehicle that helps you gather information from the driving scene. Visual lead is an area of 20 to 30 seconds from the front of your vehicle. This helps you gather and process as much information as you can about the driving scene. Question 40. This type of sign tells a driver about a possible danger ahead. They are yellow and black in color. A. Regulatory signs. B. Guide signs. C. Warning signs. D. Construction signs. The correct answer is... C. Warning signs. Warning signs are used to warn the driver of possible dangers and other obstacles up ahead in your intended path of travel. They can be used to warn a driver of a curve up ahead or a paved road turning to gravel. There are many different kinds of warning signs. They are yellow and black in color. Question 41. When driving in heavy fog, you should not A. Use your high beam headlights when driving in fog. B. Slow down and allow extra time to reach your destination. C. Use your low beam headlights or fog lights if your vehicle is equipped with them. D. Both B and C. The correct answer is... A. Use your high beam headlights when driving in fog. When driving in foggy conditions, high beam headlights will make it harder to see. Low beam headlights or fog lights will help with the decreased visibility. When driving in adverse weather conditions, giving yourself more time to reach your destination safely is ideal. Question 42. This type of sign tells the driver about specific laws they must obey. A. Warning signs. B. Regulatory signs. C. Guide signs. D. Construction signs. The correct answer is... B. Regulatory signs. Regulatory signs are there to regulate laws that have been set in place. Some examples include stop signs, yield signs, and speed limit signs. Their main colors are black, white, and red. Question 43. This type of sign helps let the driver know of possible gas stations or rest areas coming up at exits off of the expressway. A. Regulatory signs. B. Construction signs. C. Warning signs. D. Guide signs. The correct answer is D. Guide signs. Guide signs provide the driver with information about roads, expressways, and distance. They provide the driver with distance and directions to their destinations. Question 44. If your vehicle is carrying a projecting load that sticks out four feet or more from the back of the vehicle, what must you add to the back of the load? A. A red, yellow, or orange flag at least 16 inches wide if during daylight. B. A red light visible from at least 500 feet if at night. C. A stop or alert sign. D. Both A and B. The correct answer is... D. Both A and B. Improperly marking a load that sticks out four feet or more from the back of your vehicle presents a hazard for other vehicles. They may not be able to properly judge how far the items are sticking out, and serious damage may be caused to their vehicle, or serious injury or death may be caused to a person. Question 45. When pulling a camper or trailer, what is the minimum following distance you should maintain behind other vehicles? A. At least 200 feet. B. At least 300 feet. C. At least 400 feet. D. At least 500 feet. The correct answer is... D. At least 500 feet. Pulling a camper or trailer means you will need greater stopping time. Giving your vehicle at least 500 feet of space between your vehicle and the vehicle you are following will help prevent rear-end collisions, vehicle damage, bodily injury, and death. Sudden stops while pulling a trailer can result in flipping the vehicle and trailer, resulting in great damage and injury to all involved. Question 46. What are some things to be aware of when driving near snow plows? A. Flying debris from sanding and salting, getting kicked up from the road, and snow and ice chunks. B. The blades move and stick out from the sides of the vehicle. The vehicle will also have blind spots. C. Whiteout conditions caused by clouds of blowing snow. D. All of the above. The correct answer is 
D. All of the above. Snow plows do make the roads safer to travel during winter conditions. However, traveling near them can be hazardous, and it is best to give them space to do what they need to do. Question 47. How often should you stop to rest when traveling long distances? A. When you get bored. B. When you are hungry or have to use the restroom. C. Every 100 miles or every two hours. D. When you feel tired. The correct answer is... C. Every 100 miles or every two hours. It is easy to quickly become tired when traveling long distance even if you are well rested. Stopping every 100 miles or a couple of hours to get out of the vehicle and move around gives your body a chance to stretch, loosen up, and get your circulation going. This is an opportune moment to grab a bite to eat and use the restroom too. Question 48. Which of the following items listed below can affect your ability to drive safely? A. Over-the-counter medications. B. Illegal drugs. C. Marijuana. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. Alcohol, marijuana, and other illegal drugs affect your ability to drive safely. Over-the-counter medications, such as Benadryl, which can cause drowsiness and affect your ability to drive safely. Question 49. Which of the following defines hydroplaning best? A. When you drive your vehicle on a lake or other body of water. B. When water collects under your vehicle's tires so that they no longer make contact with the road. C. When you drive in the rain. D. When you drive so fast in the rain it feels like flying. The correct answer is B. When water collects under your vehicle's tires so that they no longer make contact with the road. Hydroplaning is dangerous. You can easily lose control of the vehicle and hit another vehicle or go off the road when hydroplaning. If you find yourself in a situation where your vehicle is hydroplaning, take your foot off the accelerator until the tires make contact with the road again and you regain control of the vehicle. Question 50. Which of the following is the best alternative you can do instead of drinking and driving? A. Allowing your friend who has only had one drink to drive you home. B. You can drive yourself home because you have only had a half of can of beer. C. As long as everyone is wearing their seatbelts, no one will even know you have been drinking, so you will not be pulled over. D. Call someone for a ride or stay home because you know everyone there will be drinking and they will want to peer pressure you into drinking with them. The correct answer is... D. Call someone for a ride or stay home because you know everyone there will be drinking and they will want to peer pressure you into drinking with them. Consuming even small amounts of alcohol impair your ability to operate a motor vehicle. If you have been drinking and drove your vehicle there, leave your vehicle there until tomorrow and call your parents, a rideshare, or anyone that has not been drinking. That can get you home safely. Question 51. If an oncoming vehicle is approaching in your lane, what should you do? A. Move to the left, oncoming lane. B. Move to the right, possibly shoulder. C. Honk. D. Both B and C. The correct answer is D. Both B and C. It is important to not move into the left or oncoming lane because the driver of the other vehicle may correct their course of travel and steer back into the left lane, hitting your vehicle. It is better to veer off the road and honk at them to alert them and others of the danger. Question 52. If your vehicle stalls on the railroad tracks and a train approaches, what should you do? A. Run towards the train and try to stop it. B. Remove all passengers from the vehicle and move in a 45-degree angle away from the train to avoid being struck by flying debris. C. Try to push the vehicle off the tracks before the train gets there. D. Turn on your vehicle's hazard lights and honk the horn. The train conductor can stop soon enough. The correct answer is... B. Remove all passengers from the vehicle and move in a 45-degree angle away from the train to avoid being struck by flying debris. Trains are not likely to be able to stop once the conductor realizes something is on the tracks. Getting all the passengers out of the vehicle and away from the tracks... Moving in a 45-degree angle away from the train will help to avoid anyone being hit by flying debris. Question 53. Why is it dangerous to drive through flooded roadways? A. Just six inches of water will reach the bottom of most passenger vehicles. B. SUVs and pickups can be carried away in two feet of water. 
C. Water can hide hazards and wash out the road. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. Flooding is dangerous to drive in. It is best to avoid it and find another route. Question 54. What does alcohol consumption impair? A. Judgment, vision, attention. B. Steering, perception, reaction time. C. Coordination and balance. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. Consuming alcohol, even after the legal age, can seriously impair one's judgment, vision, attention, steering, perception, reaction time, coordination, and balance, all of which are essential functions to our ability to operate a vehicle safely. If you have consumed alcohol and need to travel by vehicle, it is best to arrange a sober ride, call a friend or family member, a taxi, or a sober ride service. Driving under the influence is dangerous and illegal. Question 55. If your headlights suddenly go out, what should you do? A. Try using your vehicle's fog lights, if the vehicle is equipped with them, turn signals, hazard lights, or parking lights to steer off the road to a safe area. B. Stop immediately and call for help. C. Slam on the brakes. D. Pull over wherever you are, pop the hood, and try jiggling the wires. The correct answer is... A. Try using your vehicle's fog lights if the vehicle is equipped with them, turn signals, hazard lights, or parking lights to steer off the road to a safe area. Using another light to substitute until you can pull over in a safe area is the best solution. It ensures that you aren't pulled off in an unsafe area. Question 56. If you drive off the road into a body of water, what should you do? A. Open the door immediately and swim to safety. B. Let the vehicle sink, then swim up to the surface. C. Nothing. The vehicle will float. Just steer back towards land. D. Open the window and exit through the window. The correct answer is... D. Open the window and exit through the window. The vehicle might float for up to a minute. This will give you time to unbuckle yourself and any passengers and escape through an open window. You should quickly swim away from the sinking vehicle as the suction from its sinking could pull you under the water. Swim towards land and seek help. Question 57. What should you do if your vehicle catches fire? A. Pull over and put water on it. B. Pull over and exit the vehicle. C. Pull over and spray it with a fire extinguisher. D. Drive to the fire station. The correct answer is... B. Pull over and exit the vehicle. You should pull over and exit the vehicle. The fire is likely under the hood. Opening the hood will expose it to more oxygen and could make it larger. Putting water on it will likely cause it to spread. Taking time to drive to the fire station will give it time to grow and become more dangerous. Question 58. This is a warning sign that a driver might be fatigued. A. Yawning or rubbing their eyes. B. Changing lanes often. C. Turning the heat on. D. Locking the vehicle doors. The correct answer is... A. Yawning or rubbing their eyes. Yawning and rubbing your eyes are both signs of fatigue. Fatigue can happen to anyone at any time. If a driver becomes fatigued, they need to find a safe spot to pull over into. The driver needs to get some sleep before they can continue driving. Many of us in today's society become fatigued. Our lives have become go, go, go. Fatigue and driving can make a very deadly duo. Question 59. It is blank responsibility for operating a vehicle in a safe and appropriate manner. A. The passengers. B. The parents of the passengers. C. The person who owns the vehicle. D. The driver. The correct answer is... D. The driver. The driver is always responsible for anything that happens while the vehicle is in motion. The driver is also responsible for ensuring that every passenger in their vehicle is correctly wearing their seat belts as well. Question 60. How can careless driving be defined? A. Driving in a way that can cause harm to a person or property. B. Happily driving without a care in the world. C. Not caring about what you are doing when you are driving. D. Feeling like it doesn't matter how you drive. The correct answer is... A. Driving in a way that can cause harm to a person or property. Careless driving is dangerous. 
You can cause harm to others or property when you practice careless driving. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, then check out these videos or click the first link in the description to get your cheat sheet, which will help you pass your DMV exam on your first try.